These catalysts could push gold to $4,000 in 2023. Now, gold is different things to different people. To some, it's the only form of real money. Others, it's an inflation or a chaos hedge. And for others, like good old Warren Buffett or the young crypto bros, it's an old rock and relic. But the central banks around the world are buying and they're adding to their reserves as fast as they can get their hands on and the price action over the last few months shows us there's many reasons why some top analysts believe we could see gold hit $4,000 in 2023. So in this video, I'll show you what the gold analysts are saying. We're going to look at the top reasons and catalysts for it to go there and the top ways to play this if you want to add some to your portfolio to survive and thrive 2023. So let's go. All right, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Moss and I make these videos to change the way you think about money. Because if you can understand it properly, we can navigate this. And I get it, it's scary. You got the central banks trying to make you poor, uh, pumping money into the economy, sucking it back out. The year looks dangerous. What are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna get through together. We're gonna get to the other side of this and we're gonna talk about one of the best chaos hedges to help us get through to the other side. All right, so gold to $4,000. Crazy talk, right? I mean, that's more than 100% gain from here. Well, maybe it's not so crazy. A lot of top analysts think that's to be the case. Let's take a look at this. Uh, you can see this article from CNBC right here talking about gold going to $4,000. Now, uh, it's a nice clickbait, but what they did is they did say, yes, 4,000. They said the gold price could surge to $4,000 per ounce in 2023 as interest rate hikes and recession fears keep markets volatile. So interest rates hikes, that's a very important piece we're gonna look at, um, says Jurig Keener. He's the managing director and chief investment officer at Swiss Asia Capital. Now, giving him the benefit of the doubt, he says that it could reach between 2,500 and 4,000. So he gave a range. 4,000 was the very top of his range, but 2,500. Hey, we'll take that. That's a pretty good increase, especially when you can play it leveraged up, like I'm gonna show you how. Who says that can happen sometime next year? Now he explained that many economies, including the US economy, could face, quote, a little bit of a recession. So probably going into recession, Bloomberg says 100% chance. Um, some analysts think a 40% chance. He said a little bit of recession. It would lead to many central banks slowing the pace of rate hikes and make gold instantly more attractive. So when the rate hikes are going up, the dollar, gold, we're gonna dig into that. So if they stop right, right, uh, hiking rates. Then what happens to the dollar and gold? So we'll look at that in a second. Um, according to the World Gold Council, central banks bought 400 tons of gold, doubling, doubling the previous record. Doubling. Central banks bought more gold, doubling the previous record in the same period of 2018. So this kind of frames it up how we get there and we're going to dig into this a little bit. All right, now I do want to show you uh, back to kind of what we talk, we're talking about here is the rate hikes and the dollar. So gold and the dollar like to be inversely correlated, meaning when one goes up, the other goes down. Now, it's not just about the dollar, it's about real rates. And so we have to look at the Fed rates and inflation and a bunch of other things. But this is an easy way to look at it. And so we have the dollar and gold being inversely correlated. And what we can see is that um, when the Fed started raising rates, uh, the dollar got enormously strong, stronger, 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 started crushing all the other currencies in the world. But as they've started to, we started to see the end of these rate hikes coming in September, you can see the dollar started rolling over and the dollar index, the DXY is down by 8.74%. Now remember this in September, it's a key date. We're going to look at some other charts, but I want you to remember that. So um, it looks like the dollar is done going up. It's rolling over and maybe it's a little bit volatile, but what's going to happen with rate hikes? Well, it looks like maybe there's one more reduced rate hike, one or two, and then probably a pause. And so I'm probably not expecting, most aren't expecting the dollar index to continue shooting so high because the rate hikes are mostly behind us. And so that kind of tells us what's going to happen with gold. And I'm going to show you uh, in a second. All right. Now, inflation has not peaked. This is the second thing. Now, hooray, we went from 9% to 7%. The Fed saved us, right? They lowered inflation. They're going to get inflation back to 2%. No, I don't believe that. As a matter of fact, I've made videos talking about why I think inflation might be some of the lowest that we'll see for the rest of the decade. Of course, you have to remember that nothing goes up in a straight line. So things go like this. So just because inflation's coming down now, doesn't mean that it's peaked. It, sure, it's peaked for the last couple of months, 
doesn't mean it's peaked for the, Latin, for the next year, the next five, 10 years. And so we need to be looking at our investments over longer periods of time than weeks and months. And so I don't believe that inflation has peaked. And I think that most analysts are missing the big picture. They're missing the geopolitical picture. You got to look at the world. You got to see that the world is breaking apart. We're going from a unipolar world to a multipolar world. That means supply chains are going to get completely reimagined. That means we're going to see when we see populations declining because of demographics. And this is going to have dramatic effects on our supply chains, the way that we buy and sell stuff, onshoring, near storing, and it's going to create enormous changes in prices, mostly going up. Like I said, as the world is decentralizing. Also, um, some big catalysts is China coming back online. For basically the last three years, China has been shut down. And of course, China, over the last decade or so, has been the largest buyer and exporter, but, but the largest buyer of commodities, copper, steel, um, you, know, you name it, uh, every building material. And as they shut their economy down, boom, you can see what happened here to their GDP went through the floor. Then they tried to open it back up, Oop, too much COVID. Then they went to zero COVID policy, which came down and you can already see right here, they've got off the zero COVID, they've given up. And now you can see how quickly it's starting to come back. Now, to show you how this correlates, here is the China liquidity, the amount of money they're pumping into their own system and the world commodity prices. And so what we can see is they're very correlated here. When China's putting money into their system, the global commodities go up. When China doesn't put money into the system, like in zero COVID policy area, then the, then the commodities of the world don't go up. And so as China's opening, they've abandoned that policy. They're gonna start getting their economy going. That's gonna have a massive impact on commodity prices, which of course is gold. So lots of reasons why gold is looking really good. We also have, um, this is a, a tweet from Michael Burry, Michael Burry from uh, the big short fame. He said that inflation peaked, but it's not the last peak of this cycle. See what I'm saying? So it peaked, sure. It was 9.1, now it's a seven, okay, it peaked. But it's not the last peak of this cycle. So it go up and then come down, and then it go up and then down. So it peaked here, but it's still gonna go higher here, right? And that's what he's saying, but not the last peak of the cycle. We are likely to see CPI lower, so it'll probably still keep going down a little bit. Possibly negative, I doubt we'll see negative. And the US in recession by any definition. Fed will then cut, so we're gonna probably see inflation going down, he says maybe deflation, a massive recession, which will then cause the Fed to cut and the government will stimulate. Then they'll start pumping money into the system and we will then have another inflation spike. It's not that hard, he says. So we're going up, now we're going down. We're gonna go down too fast, they're gonna pump it back up again. That's what they're saying. And that is exactly what I'm saying. We're gonna to continue to see inflation going up, which is, again, bullish for gold. We wanna keep an eye on the dollar though, remember. If they're inflating, the dollar's going down. As they're tightening, the dollar's going up, and gold is inverse to that. All right, now what we can see is interesting is, like I said, there's this inverse correlation, but here's what's interesting. What we're see starting to see is they're beginning to move together. So the dollar goes up, gold goes down. That's what typically works. But what happens when the dollar goes up, treasuries go up, and gold goes up together. Then gold is starting to break out. That's what we're seeing. As a matter of fact, we're starting to see them beginning to move together. It's happened about 13 times. And what we can see is that um, of all 13 times, only two of the 13 happened at the end of the bull cycle. The other 11 times happened at the beginning. And so, 11 out of 13 times when they moved together, it represented a beginning of a big bull run in gold, um, not at the end of the bull run. And of course, we're not at the end of a bull run in gold. Everybody knows that. And so it looks like things could just be getting going. Now, what about silver? This is a question I get all the time. What about silver? Gold has a lot of uh, fundamentals behind it. Silver just kind of moves along with gold. Let's take a look at that. What we can see is that silver is still liquidating. The SLV um, fund is liquidating. People are drawing the physicals out of it. As a matter of fact, they've withdrawn 2.4 million ounces in just the last two days. And what we can see is the amount is down to this line. We haven't seen this level this um, low level of actually physical in inventory since September. So it's being drained really, really fast. That means there's massive demand for the physical. Um, and because of that, 
we can see the miners are rallying hard. We're going to take a look at that. Uh, I think it's a sustainable bull trend, but what I want to show you is this, is the gold-silver ratio. And so historically, there's been a 15 to 1, right? Uh, I don't believe that, I, I believe that's broken. I don't believe we'll ever go back to 15 to 1. A lot of people do. Leave me a comment if you believe it will. But what is interesting is we can see this goes back to about the year 2000. I didn't go all the way back, but you can see here 60%. So it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. The reason why I want to show you this chart is we want to see what happens to the we want to see what happens to the ratio when gold rallies. And so what we can see here is here's 2000, here's 2008. So gold gold plummeted in the crash, but it did really good because it rebounded right away. It recovered its all-time high within about seven months. It took the S&P 500, I believe, seven years. So it did really good, but we can see it peaked right here. Now at this peak, when gold hit its peak in 2011. That's right here. So at the time, the, you can see that the gold-silver ratio actually dropped as the price of gold went up. You see how the correlation worked. So the gold-silver ratio was 40 at the last peak. Then gold's been drifting down. It came back up here in about July, August of 2020, which is right here. And again, you can see that it went up as gold was coming down. But then you can see that the gold-silver ratio dropped again down to about 65. So maybe if gold shoots up to $2,500 to $4,000 an ounce, we see the gold-silver ratio drop down as well. Now that's extremely bullish for silver. So if we get down to, let's say, a 50 to 1 ratio, for example, we could see silver getting to $80 an ounce. Now, I don't know if it gets to 50 to 1, maybe here in the 65, 70 range might be more realistic, which puts gold at 50 bucks, which we've already been there before. That's a previous all-time high. Most people think we'll see silver get to 50 bucks pretty easily. All right, because of that, because that's, we've already established that high. Now, how can we play this? There's a couple ways that we can play this, all right? So the first way is we can, of course, buy the physicals. Easy, right? Buy the physical, put it in your safe, put it in a vault, all right, and that's a good way to play it. Now, if it goes from gold goes from 1800 to 2500, you made a couple hundred bucks. That's great. Now, how do you play it with leverage? Well, uh, another way, if you don't want to, if you let's say you don't live in a safe environment where you can keep it in the safe, keep it at your house, you can buy it in a fund. There's ETFs, the silver fund, the gold fund, etc. You can buy it and store it in a vault. Those are ways. Or you can do gold miners. That's the way that I like to play it for leverage. If the price of gold goes up by 500 bucks, that's cool, but if you're a miner that has 80 million ounces in the ground, 80 million ounces times 500 bucks is way better. So let's take a look at a way to play this, and I want to show you some of these silver miners. Now, this right here is the silver trust. We already talked about this. So this is a way to play physical silver. Okay, and what we can see, remember the date, September, right when the Fed, or I'm sorry, right when the Dixie, the dollar, started dropping in September, the price of silver started going up. Gold and silver both went up because they move inversely. So what we can see here is that um, since the dollar started going down in September, silver, physical silver, if you had silver in your safe or under your bed, it went up by 32%. That's pretty good. 32% in, in uh, whatever, four or five months. However, if I were to own a good silver miner, so here's one called Silver Corp. I've talked about this one before. In the same period here since September, this has gone up by 64%, more than double what physical silver did. So physical silver, great, 30%, I did great. But on a miner, I made double that because again, they have the leverage of all the gold and the, the silver, gold, whatever in the ground. Here's another one, a big one, uh, one of the biggest ones in the world you probably heard of, Fortuna silver. Um, same period right here, September, it's gone up and you can see it's up 63% in the same period. So double what the physical has done. Now, Nothing goes up and down in a straight line. A lot of people are like, it went up and then it went down. Oh, Mark, but look, it went down. Yes, it went down. As you can see, nothing goes in a straight line here. So you have to look at the big picture. You got to zoom out. So uh, here's another silver miner that I'm taking a look at right now. I've talked about this one before. Now, disclaimer, this is a promotional video. I'm letting you know right now. Use this as a learning experience. This is how I look at deals. All right, I'm not telling you to buy this but I think it's very useful for your education. I've talked about this company before. I'm talking about Silver Mountain Resources. I talked about it in September when I thought we were hitting the bottom, and I believe this is up 30% since I talked about it in September. So it's already done really well. If you took action when I talked about it in September, you're up, I don't know, 20, 30% as well. So Silver Mountain, AGMRF, it's one of the most prolific silver areas in the world. 
um, which is in Peru. And so they have massive amounts of silver. What I like about Silver Mountain is that they already have the permits and they already have the funds ready. So this is a project that's already getting going. We can get in really early. I'm going to show you that. And they have a proven track record and team that's running it. Let me show you a couple things. All right. So we always know that we should buy things when they're cheap. You're supposed to buy low and sell high, right? So how do you know when they're cheap? Most people are trying to pick bottoms and they're trying to pick tops. And that's ridiculous. It's a fool's errand. You'll never do it. If anybody could pick perfect bottoms and tops, they'd be the richest person in the history of the world and they can't. So what we can do is we can buy when things are cheap and we can sell when things are expensive. And so that's what we're trying to do. So how do we know when things are cheap? Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. This looks like it's a, what I'm calling a bear market gift because we're in a bear market, right? Because the markets are coming down, this has been dragged down with it. Now, as I said, since I talked about it last September, it's actually up. I believe it was a 40 million market cap when I talked about it last time. Now it's about a $45 million market cap. But here's what I'm talking about cheap. So it's about a $45 million market cap today. They have $13 million in cash. So what you do is you go, well, okay, they have 13 million in cash plus they have about $30 million in assets. So if you liquidated the company, you get about $43 million. So they're valued about what they have in cash and what they have in assets. However, this is where it gets better. They have about 80 million ounces of silver in the ground. Now the typical market price of silver in the ground is about $2 an ounce. Not the $18 that it's gonna be worth when they get it out of the ground. It's still in the ground, they gotta get it out. So it's worth about two bucks. So if you take the 80 million ounces times the market rate of about two bucks, um, plus the $13 million in cash that they have, that gives it $173 million in value and we can get it for a price of only 45 million. So that's cheap. What I learned in real estate early on is you make your money when you buy, not when you sell. Speculators have it all wrong. They stand in line, they buy this spec home, they think it's gonna be able to sell for more in a year from now. That's not how you do it. You make your money when you buy. So I want to buy a product right now that if I add this garage, I can instantly sell it for more, right? I'm making my money when I buy. That's what we're talking about. We can get $173 million in value for 45 million. Now, the other thing is how do we know it's cheap is we want to look at the experts and we want to invest with the experts and we even want to beat the experts if we can, which isn't super easy. So when they raised money, they did a pre IPO round. So this is not available to you. This is only available to the insiders pre IPO and they raised at 33 cents Canadian. That's the price that it went out to the public. Big names, Eric Sprott, probably the biggest name in all of uh, resource mining, Eric Sprott, he got in at 33 cents. He was invited, I wasn't, neither were you. Jose Vizcarra, he got in. Now Jose Vizcarra is, is, is uh, the grandson of the godfather of mining, resource mining in Peru, we'll talk about that in a second. Then they did an IPO round. So then they went to an IPO round and that still was kind of to the insiders. You and I weren't invited. They did an IPO round at 50 cents Canadian. Now we got uh, not just Eric Sprott, but his company Sprott, which is the, probably the premier number one resource investing company, Sprott got in at 50 cents. Franklin Templeton, which is one of the largest asset managers in the world, the who's who, I believe they have uh, 1.5 or $2 trillion under management. They got in at 50 cents. Merck, they got in at 50 cents. And today the price is 31 cents Canadian. Now I think it was 17 cents when I talked about it before, so it's done pretty good. However, we can get in at 31 cents today, which is less than Sprott, Franklin Templeton and Merck, which is even less than Eric Sprott and Jose Vizcarra got in. So not only can we get it when it's cheap, we can also get in better than these other people. And what I like about this company is it's the insiders that hold it. And so we can see, Eric Sprott, Sprott the company, Merck, and we can see how much they own, 5%. They own about three to 5% each, which is a pretty good amount of money. I like to see that they have that in there. Now, they also have a really good team running it. We have Alfredo Bazo. Now, he was part of a company called Buena Ventura. So he was formerly the CEO, which is one of the largest mining companies in Peru, and now he's working here at this project. We have Jose Vizcarra. Like I said, he's the grandson of the, the godfather of mining. Uh, he's involved, and these are some of the biggest owners uh, as well. We have, uh, we can see right here, the insiders buying. So Jose Vizcarra, we can see his buying, and he's been buying, 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 buying. 
31 cents, 30 cents, 26 cents, 27 cents, 28 cents, 30 cents. So at the price we can buy at today, that's where he's buying. He's there on the inside. Now Sprott, as I said, the company, not the investor, they went out and did some research to recommend it to their um, buyers. And they said that we visited Silver Mountain's uh, mine last week in Peru, which reaffirmed our view that this is one of the best silver names right now, trading multiples below peers with lower grades and smaller endowments. Uh, they are able to restart upside in the near term. We note from our visit, the infill and exploration drilling has already started, so they're already working on the project. With 30 million cash, high grade silver exploration underway and restart potential next year, this stock is too cheap at 32 million market cap. They gave it a price target of I think 80 cents or 90 cents. So it's cheap. Could it get cheaper? It could, but it's cheap. We know that. All right, now, um, price is better than timing. As I said, nobody can time the perfect top or the perfect bottom. We just can't do it. So we have to just rely on price. When is it cheap? Well, it's cheaper than the IPO round. It's cheaper than the experts got in. It's cheaper than what the recommended prices are. We're looking for something always as an investor is a mismatch multiplier, I call this. It's the difference between perception and reality. The perception is that the resource sector is bad, that the economy is going to crash, gold's going to go down, nobody wants to put money into it, but the reality is that central banks are buying more now, double, than they did in 2018. What we know is that the reality is that the who's who, the BIS, the central banks are buying. That's the mismatch we're looking for. We want to buy stuff when it's hated and when it's cheap. So it's been out of favor. Gold and silver have kind of been out of favor. I've been talking about the bottom since about September. So if you've been watching my channel, we don't hate it as much as a lot of people. Um, also with silver, the supply is very, very low. As I showed you, the silver um, ETF is getting drained, right? They're pulling all the silver out of it. It's with the lowest level it's been in the last several months. And at the same time, the demand is high. We have all these reasons why demand is high, including China coming back on board. And that's gonna be the biggest buyer of commodities. And like I said, the market is catching up. I showed you, um, those couple different silver miners are up 50, 60% the last couple of months. This is up almost double in the last couple of months. And so I think it's a good company. I'm not saying to buy it, but it's a good learning opportunity. And hopefully you learned something on this. Either way, I'm bullish on gold and silver and precious metals, but are you? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about gold. Could it get to $2,500 a year? Could it get to $4,000 a year? What's your price target? Let me know. Of course, as always, Give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it. If you don't, you can give me a thumbs down, that's okay, but at least tell me why in the comments. Oh yeah, hit that subscribe button while you're at it. And that's it, to your success, I'm out.